Hi, welcome to Tim's Read Throughs. Today will be a whole new edition. Um, we're starting with uh, new, new uh, Tim's Read Throughs in the Kitchen with A Feast of Ice and Fire, a book based off of the recipes in George R.R. R. Martin's The Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, today we will be doing Roasted Oryx with Leeks. The passage is, Such food Bran had never seen. Course after course, so much that he could not manage more than a bite or two of each dish. There were great joints of oryx roasted with leeks, venison pies, dot, 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 from A Clash of Kings. Um, this, is a, this is a very tasty main course, fit for any feast. The roasted vegetables are delicious, a counterpart to the tender meat. They almost steal the thunder from the roast beef. But the addition of the black pepper sauce really kicks the meat up a few notches. And that's where we'll start. We'll be starting by making the black pepper sauce and going from there. So starting off with the black pepper sauce, we will be uh, burning a piece of toast till it's black. And uh, the ingredients we'll need are... Um, one slice of bread, toasted until black. A third cup of verjuice, or equal parts cider, vinegar, and water. One tablespoon of red wine vinegar. One tablespoon of ground black pepper. And a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. Okay, I've, uh, I've put the, um, the red wine vinegar and the verjuice, or... Uh, the equal parts of cider and cider vinegar and water. Put those in the pan a while. Uh, we'll be adding our burnt bread. But before I do, I wanted to read a little bit about this medieval black pepper sauce. Uh, this recipe makes a rich sauce that pairs well with robust red meats such as venison and boar, as well as the more mundane beef. The quantities of ingredients can be tweaked to make the sauce thicker or thinner to your preference, and you can adjust the amount of pepper to taste. The tartness of the vinegar might surprise you at first, but after a little acclimation, we think that you'll like it as much as we do. The charred flavor of the bread combined with the bite of the pepper rounds out the flavor sensations that go with this sauce. So what we're going to do first is soak the burned bread in the liquid with, in a small saucepan until it falls apart, then mash it with a fork. So as you can see, I've got my bread burned black. And uh, we're going to toss that in there, and um, as soon as it soaks up the water, we'll, we'll mash it up, and then we'll stir in the spices and slowly bring it to a boil. And uh, it says here, for thinner sauce, add more liquid, and for a smoother version, press it through a sieve. Uh, sieve. I'm wondering if maybe I should have burnt this a little, a little more. I also have to pardon my my dog. She's got a bit of a smoker's cough. I've made this once before, and I was really surprised by the sauce because you know you think burnt bread is just going to taste absolutely appalling, but I was really surprised, you know, the, the tartness of the vinegar and like it says about the, uh, the pepper and, you know, it's got that little bit of ginger mixed in. It's, it's really, really a good flavor. So, now that we've got... Got that ma mashed up fairly well. We will uh, turn on the heat. And 
we'll give it a little bit above a medium heat. And like I said, one tablespoon of pepper. And a quarter teaspoon of ginger. And I'm not going to continue to use this fork. And uh, I don't know if you can hear that, that's Parks and Rec in the background. So, we'll bring this to a boil. And then this will be our sauce for the arcs with leeks. And again, this is a medieval black pepper sauce. I think at the end of the video... I will post a, uh, or I'll, or maybe in the description. In the description, I'll leave uh, all the recipes, and uh, I'll leave them in their entirety. That way, that way everyone can enjoy them. And with that, we will move on to the roasted arcs and preparing for for them. Okay, next uh, we'll be cutting the leeks for the roasted oryx with leeks, as well as for another recipe that I plan on making in a separate video. Uh, but we'll go ahead and cut these. They need to be in about uh, quarter inch pieces. Um, it says six. I'm only going to use four, so because I just grabbed a bunch of six. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's get chopping. All right, it says to use the white and light green pieces only, so I'm probably only going to use to about here. And we're going to, like I said, cut these in about a quarter inch pieces. And these will go in the bottom of the pan um, below the I, I got beef you know oryx I believe it's a an extinct cattle or maybe it's not extinct and we just don't have them around here so I just got beef um, yeah so I think that's probably about the size that we'll be using and like I said, we're getting rid of all that dark green stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll also be cutting carrots for this. The carrots should be sliced about the same size, I believe. I'll have to double check the recipe. Uh, but yeah. So with that, uh, I'll be doing the other two and chopping the rest for the other recipe. Okay, now we've got to cut the carrots again in about quarter inch slices, uh, both for the roasted RX and for the other recipe I intend on doing. And we will uh, be doing this for all of those, although I think for the other recipe, for the sister stew, I'll be I'll be cutting them maybe a little bit smaller, more into uh, dices for uh, since they're going into a stew, but uh, yeah. 
I'll uh, go ahead and cut the rest of these and we'll move on. Okay, one step that I did not videotape was um, peeling one whole clove of garlic. Uh, I didn't feel like it was necessary to show me peeling each, each thing, but we have a full clove here. And uh, now we will place the vegetables, garlic, and herbs into a roasting tray and drizzle with olive oil. Uh, toss to make sure everything is coated. So we'll take our, our leeks and our carrots. And our garlic. And you know what? I don't think this pan is going to be big enough for the tossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mixing bowl, mix it all up, and then put it in here. So, um, now I need the the herbs. So for the herbs, they call for um, a small bunch of fresh thyme, rosemary, bay, sage, or a mixture. I'm going to do a mixture. I'm just going to throw all the bay leaves that I have in there. And I've got a bunch of sage here. So I'll just. And again, in the background, we've got Parks and Rec. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, but since I'm cooking this dinner for myself and my fiance, I'm not going to make her sit over there in silence as I as I make this video. So you might have a little background noise from from time to time. You might hear the dogs also. We've got an American Bulldog named Murphy, and a pug named Taffy. So again, that was the sage, and now I'm going to add some rosemary sprigs. And... All right, so now we've got rosemary, and the last is thyme. I couldn't find any thyme um, in a uh, in a packet, so I bought some fresh, and I'm just gonna throw throw some whole sprigs of this in there. And like I said, now we um, now we drizzle oil, oh, olive oil, over this and toss it. And let me see how much you call it. Uh, doesn't really say it. Just says olive oil. So. Just drizzle some over. That might have been a bit much. Toss this around. And dump that into our pan. And 
Now, we will drizzle oil over the beef and then liberally sprinkle with salt and pepper and place the meat directly on top of the vegetables. So you know what I will do? I'll use that same bowl. Now, the recipe calls for about three pounds of a top round or a top round bison or beef. Um, I didn't get bison, but I do have a nice little beef roast here. Top round London broil. Let me just wash my hands quick. <clears throat> okay, now let me get this oil. Liberally crack some pepper in here. And some salt. Now I'm going to wash my hands again so I, um, so I can get the other side of this and then I think we'll be about ready. So, liberally cover this. Like I said, I've made this once before. This was actually the first recipe I made. And it turned out really, really good. So now that we're liberally coated, place this on top. And there we are. Now, uh, I'll preheat the oven to 400, which I probably should have done before I started this. And I'll toss it in there. We'll cook it for about an hour. And uh, near the end of that time, I'll check the meat. Uh, it should be about 145 degrees. And <clears throat> about halfway through, I'm going to check the vegetables to make sure that they're not uh, not burning. And when I do that, I'll, I'll baste it. I'll probably take a video of that, too. So maybe in about a half hour or so, we'll get a video of checking on everything and see how everything's turning out. So here we are, getting ready to check on our roasted Oryx. And it's already getting down. don't think I have any beef stock, but it said that we can add water, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just about a half a cup of water here, just so that we don't dry out our vegetables. Ouch. Yeah, that burned a little. 
He didn't see me cut myself, but he did see me burn myself. So, um, yeah, I added a little bit of water just so that it doesn't doesn't dry out the vegetables. You can see a little, a little getting a little crispy there. So what we'll do is we'll put this back in and uh, leave it cook for about another half hour, and then we'll check the temperature and see where we're at. Okay, so for this being the last video, I'm going to go to a little handheld action. And uh, first we'll start off, we'll base some of these vegetables. Oh, sorry, I'm not watching what I'm watching what I'm doing, not watching what I'm taping. So, all right. So we basted it a little bit, and now we're going to stick this in the meaty center. And it said we wanted it at about 145 degrees. And yeah, it looks like it might be 150. Okay, well, that should be about done for my fiance as well as done for me. And uh, I mean, I would have liked it a little bit more rare. Wow, it's still going up. Um, I would have liked it probably about medium, but. We're going to cut this thing open and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, now I just realized that I don't have a large two-tine fork, so I'm using a regular fork here. But let's just cut into that. See a nice red or pink uh, center there. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is the roasted oryx with leeks. You can see it's got a nice pink center. Um, and uh, let me grab the vegetables over here. Vegetables are good and roasted, so I'll serve those along with the meat as a side dish. Um, and yeah, uh, that's recipe from. <laughs> sorry, that carrot's pretty good. Um, recipe from A Feast of Ice and Fire. Uh, you can find all the other recipes online at in at the in at the crossroads.com uh, they've got these recipes as well as others although I think some are on the website some aren't so check it out uh, and also like I said I'll be posting the uh, ingredients and the how-to in the description so feel free to go ahead and make it and comment what you thought of the recipe like, comment, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and share, share the videos, and so that other people can get a taste of, you know, what what a song of ice and fire is really all about. Um, it's not what they portrayed on the TV show whatsoever. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and enjoy the meal.